All right. <coughs> so we've got the first few spunk things done. Now let's talk about this brute force attack. We did not find out how the threat actor got the privilege of executing code on our server. So let's do this. And for that, I'm going to move to the second Splunk server, which I think is getting a little less traffic and responding a little faster. All right, so here's my Splunk server. And so the first thing is um, find the HTTP events using the POST method. So I can just start here with the data summary and go to source types. Yes, there we are. And now, yes, oh, source types, here we go. OK. And now I can find stream HTTP among the source types. And there it is. All right, so here's the stream data. Now I'm going to turn on some event sampling to make it move faster and go to all time. All right, so now I've got some HTTP stream data. And your HTTP data, you got, you got an HTTP method right here, which is usually post or get. Some of this stuff is using options, but that's rare. And when you're, since the attacker got code execution on our box, it, may, it appears that they somehow were able to log in. So the post method is what you usually use to log in. So let's look at the post requests. So I click that and it adds it here. So here we see a timeline of the post requests on our network. Now this is all the post requests, but we really only want the post requests that go to our web server. So we should put the domain name back in here. I'm really not batman.com. And it remembers this from previous queries on this server. So this will be requests to our web server that send data up which would include logins. And you see, all the action seems to be on August 10. And here we get three events in this minute, and two in that minute, and two in that minute. So nothing too exciting here. Um, all right. And that's my timeline. All right. Before 21. OK. So let me go back to my instructions. I'm supposed to find 15,000. Oh, I still have my filtering turned on. That's why. Let's turn off my filtering. And I should find that number, 15,570. It's still searching. It's not done until it finds the, uh, so it shows the green check. OK, 15,560. Uh, that's close enough. And now. I can see 300 events then, 300 events then, up here more events. All right, so uh, now let's get rid of the events from the vulnerability scanner because we already know that it sent a ton of requests and that's no longer very interesting to us. So let's get rid of that. And the easiest way to do that, again, the sort of thing I like to do that the Splunk people find wasteful is just use not the way you would in Google not Acunetics. So this is just going to exclude all events that have that word anywhere in the event, which is good enough to get the job done, although technically it wastes some server processing time. And now we're down to 431 events. And you can see they all happen pretty much here. 200 events in one minute and 212 events one minute later, and then basically nothing. So this is a brute force attack. They sent hundreds of logins all in a space of a couple of minutes. And then that was it. So that's probably the good stuff. And so we want to look at the form data of these events. Now you can go down here. See, if you go through a login event like this, um, if you look at the request, uh, this is the destination response, 200 OK. Here's the form data. And here it has information like, this is a query asking some kind of a question. This is not a login. So that's annoying. And let's take a look at the form data the easy way. Rather than scrolling through events one by one, 
which gets pretty annoying. It's better to use this um, system here when you can. Now, there, i got to scroll back to the top. All right. And so the field uh, form date is here. There we are. Here we see some events. So none of this is logins, and this is not a login. Uh, in fact, none of this stuff is logins. So the way I used to look at a long list of events is this, which I'll show you. You hit top values, and then Splunk will make a report of the top values here on the statistics page where you see them. And now, uh, if you don't see everything you want, you can change this number to see them all. But this is one way to do it. And now you can see, here's logins. User is admin, task is login, and password is this horrible long thing. Z, yellow, Yankees, Yankee, Yamaha. Oh, I see the ampersand's there, so it's just a word. So here it is. This is the brute force attack, trying a whole lot of passwords all in a row. All right trying many requests. Now, what I like to do these days, I used to do it this way, but I found a better way to do it, which I just added as a hint here, which is to put this at the end. You make a table of time and form data. So if I go back to here and don't do this top stuff, but put in that, now I get a handy table with the time and the form data for each one. And I think the time is not sorted by default, but I can sort it here. There. And so now I'm at 21.2 seconds, 22 seconds, 0 0.24, 0 0.247, 0 0.25. So here you see this is the earliest time, and it's always username is admin, and it's trying all kinds of different passwords, sometimes here and sometimes here, sometimes here. But these are passwords going through a list, and it's at many per second. 241 seconds, 0 0.247, 250, 260, 263. There's something like a tenth of a second between password guesses. So off it goes, down the whole list of them. And this is a very handy way to view this, especially if you view 100 per page, and it's only five pages of them, you can see the whole brute force attack. There's a total of 431 events, although not all of these are from the brute force attack. And so now, there are some questions to answer here. Um, find the IP address performing an attack. So you'll just have to take any one of these and go look at it in the original form to see the IP address that originated it and then uh, find the name of the executable file that they uploaded to the server. Um, so this way, you find the post method and look for exe files, and you'll find it. All right, so I think that's enough to get you started there. And uh, I'll stop for a few minutes and put up a video of this, and then we'll start talking about Sysmon, which I said before is fantastic, the best tool to use to monitor Windows servers.